Welcome back to Buzz on Veterans on Daily News Network. I'm your host, Mike White, and on Buzz on Veterans, we are meeting with amazing people that have served our country that have gone on to do even more amazing things. Join us today from the Magellan Academy is Lori Blitch. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me. So you've got a very interesting career, multiple careers. Uh, let's start off with your military service. So uh, tell me about how you got started and, uh, and how you went into becoming an officer in the Navy. So I, uh, it was, you know, obviously it was more than, tw I served 21 years and it was obviously much longer than that. I was working one night in the intensive care unit and a friend of mine was filling out paperwork for the Navy. And I was there and I said, Becky, what are you doing? And she said, um, I'm filling out paperwork, I'm gonna go in the Navy. And I said, what are you gonna do? And she was, well, I'm gonna be a nurse corps officer. So I thought, at that time I was in Kansas City, Missouri, and I thought, oh, well, that sounds like fun. So. I uh, went to see a recruiter, one of the nurse recruiters for the Navy, and I sat down with him and um, filled out the paperwork. And the next thing I know, I'm an officer in indoctrination school in Newport, Rhode Island. And then my first tour of duty was in Pensacola, Florida, what's not to love, Pensacola. And uh, had a, a wonderful time down there, learned a lot. It was, it was a big learning curve. My parents had been Marines, so they knew something about the military, so they were able to impart their wisdom onto me. But, uh, um, and then I stayed act, active for about eight years, and then I went into the reserves, and then I opened a business, Magellan Academy, which I've had for 25 years. So, um, I did do 21 years service as a military officer. Learned a lot, saw a lot of places, did a lot of things that I would never have gotten had I stayed a civilian nurse. So tell me a little bit about a book that you recently wrote and um, how your career inspired the book. So uh, it was one of my schools here. My janitor was in, um, cleaning the school. He went out to the dumpster and it was a January. And it was unseasonably cold that year. It was about 32 degrees that night. And he was dumping the trash and he kept hearing this faint meow coming from the dumpster. He didn't really think a lot about it, closed the lid, and then he looked down and he says, oh, I haven't emptied all the contents. So he emptied the rest of the contents and he kept hearing it again. So he looked to his right and there's this little teeny tiny box that had been intentionally taped. <clears throat> and then he picked it up, brought it into my school. My school nurse and I were working late that night. It was probably around 9.30 at night. And we opened the box and these two tiny little kittens were in there. Somebody had thrown their little life away. <clears throat> and uh, so I took them home and um, uh, we raised them. I raised them for about six months, got them spayed and neutered. One of my employees, one one gave it to her. But the other little cat, Sapphire, she's all black, beautiful sapphire blue eyes, and nobody wanted her because she was blind, so I kept her. And she's just an amazing little cat that I had to write a book about her. So I wrote a book, and it, it, it has, serves many functions. One, kids love, it's a children's book. And children love animals, obviously. But I wanted to bring out to children that there's value in all life. Even though this little cat was blind and had special needs, it's, the cat is, a, is an amazing cat. I've been interviewed multiple times uh, around the country and nationally about my book. And it has received such great reviews and I've won a number of awards. And so now I'm gonna put it in a screenplay and have a cartoon for children. That's really neat, and it ties right back into your journey again. You're starting another school in Jacksonville. I do. Um, for the Magellan Academy. Yes. Um, so how many current students are in the school? We have a little over 100 students, and we're obviously not full yet, but um, hopefully that'll pick up there. I know child care took quite a hit during COVID, and uh, it's a lot of parents say that it's just gotten so expensive, and it has. It, it has gotten very, very expensive, but I think that the federal government and state governments have tried to address that, but not rapidly enough. And uh, we've seen a tremendous volume of child care centers around the country that have closed because of uh, the price. It's just pricing parents out of the market to be able to afford it. What advice would you have for veterans that are retiring or transitioning out of the military and moving towards their next career? Um, but 
about a year to two years before they do get out, they need to be looking at the market. Which one can I work in? And I, and I always tell people, just because you're a military officer doesn't mean that they're going to hire you immediately because of your leadership skills, your forward thinking, uh, your ability to, to uh, work with people. It, it's not always like that. You have to have a skill that the civilians can use. And luckily for me, I was a registered nurse I'm also a nursing professor. I uh, teach nursing at a local college here, also in Jacksonville. But it has to be a skill that somebody can use. So I always tell them, one to two years before you retire, start looking at the, a skill and see what the civilians need, rather than getting out and resting on your laurels of like, well, I was a military officer for X number of years, then they're gonna hire me. Not so much so, you have gotta have a skill that civilians need. Well, I appreciate you coming on the program. Congratulations on all your successes yeah. and uh, looking forward to seeing the cartoon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. To find out more about Magellan Academy, visit us at dailynewsnetwork.com. We'll see you next time on the Daily News Network. Operation Barmers is a veterans ministry um, started in 2017 with the purpose of helping um, our veterans that uh, kind of got left behind. And uh, you know they've struggled with addictions, PTSD, uh, suicidal thoughts, those kind of things, helping them get whole again through one-to-one -one mentorship. Being able to communicate with them and help them can drastically change their life, can drastically change a family's life. The little that we can do is put our hand out and say, hey, do you want a hand up?